Sarah's Weeknight Meals is made possible by USA Rice, Sunsweet, Hodgson Mill, and the generous support of... Cooking is the first kind of love you know. It was starting when I was a child with my grandmother doing fresh pasta, and now I transmit it to all the guests. It's something made specially for them. Oceana Cruises, proud sponsor of Sarah's Weeknight Meals. Northern California spells good food in many ways. From San Francisco's great ethnic neighborhoods to the vast farmland of the Sacramento Valley. Today, we'll sample a little of both. I decided one day that a lot of Chinese culinary traditions were at risk of being lost. Walk legend Grace Young recalls a culinary journey home to San Francisco and one of the extraordinary recipes she discovered. Today, we're making the peppery vegetarian fried rice. How often do you make it? Well, at least once or twice a week. It's my really? go-to meal. Then it's up to the Sacramento Valley, where farmer Matthew Sligar has become an unlikely internet star. Should we start? It's getting late. Maybe we should have started. Other rice farmers have started. What do we do? Matthew grows rice used in sushi. And today, we're getting a lesson from sushi master Billy No. You're supposed to have his <laughs> hands all chefs do. <laughs> I'm a sushi chef. I touch yeah. cold fish. Matthew takes the same ingredients in a decidedly American direction. Plan on making some sushi burgers with some of the ingredients that Billy brought. Sushi two ways. We're Northern California dreaming today on Sarah's Weeknight Meals. I decided one day that a lot of Chinese culinary traditions were at risk of being lost. So that prompted me to go home and cook with my parents, and they're very, very traditional. But I really want to re record these old-fashioned recipes, and in the process of doing that, I found out a lot about my own family's history that my parents would never have talked about if we hadn't cooked together. I'm so excited because we're into wok madness, stir-fry happiness today with my friend Grace Young, the expert on stir-frying. And it's such a perfect weeknight meal, yay! So what are we making now? Today we're making the peppery vegetarian fried rice. So we're making brown rice? Yes, I've just been rinsing this. I poured off all the water. Why did you rinse it? You have um, to understand I'm rice impaired. Most Asians rinse rice, and I think that's because when rice is harvested, it sits out on mats and can get really dusty. Western nutritionists say you're never supposed to do it because you wash away the nutrients, but I think that's why the rice is never gummy. Okay, so you've rinsed it and washed it until the water runs clear, and now what happens? Well, this is one cup of long grain brown mm -hmm. rice. I'm gonna add two cups of cold water. <laughs> and then um, you just bring this to a boil on high heat, mm -hmm. and then reduce the temperature to about medium and let it boil for about 10 minutes or so until all the water has evaporated. Really? That's you really have to monitor it. Mm -hmm. Then you wanna cover it, set it on low heat, and let it cook for 10 minutes, mm -hmm. and then turn off the heat and just let it set for five just minutes. Set. Okay. Yeah, that's it's very good. simple. We'll have that whole procedure on the website, so don't worry. And Maybe you become unrice impaired like me. And after you cook it, you must fluff it before you refrigerate it. And we're gonna refrigerate it. Yes. Now, that's interesting. Why are we refrigerating it? Well, that's- I, I'll the, get it. We, I guess we got it in here, yeah? The key to fried rice is you have to cook it the day before. If you try to fry rice that has just been cooked, it's too hot and moist and it's going to be sticky and gummy. So the next day, uh, it gets sort of dried out. Is that yes. It? And that's, that's so funny, dried out rice. You would never think that would be a plus. I always cook extra so that I have extra rice so I can make fried rice. Oh. I like that idea. I am going to do ginger. Thank you. I think I need about two tablespoons. Yes. So. And I'm going to slice these shiitake mushrooms into quarter inch dice. But the beauty of this recipe is you can change up the vegetables. I actually sort of clean out my uh, refrigerator when I make fried rice. How often do you make it? Well, at least once or twice a week. It's my really? go-to meal. And then there's a half a cup of chopped scallions. So I love fried rice because it's so healthy. Well, especially if you start with brown rice. Yeah. Could you use other grains like farro or wheat berries? I've actually done fabulous fried rice light dishes with bulgur, oh. couscous, yeah. 
Once you understand this concept, you can you play can around. It, you can use it with any. And then we have one quarter inch diced carrots, about a cup. All right. Do you line it all up by the stove in the order? I do. Okay, so we're gonna do I our... don't wanna have to think what oh, goes in next. You need me to beat up a few eggs. Yes, Because we're you. gonna have, there's egg in here, which is nice. We're I gonna like. make an egg crepe, which is fun to do. And it's a nice way to add protein to this recipe. Eggs are really, uh, okay. one egg is only like 77 calories max. Um, so why not? Okay, so you, let's get, what goes in first? It's going to be the egg. I'm going to add my two teaspoons of oil. So I'm going to start testing the temperature of the wok with the water. Mm -hmm. There, this is what we want. Okay, here comes the egg. Okay, make sure it's all evaporated because otherwise it's going to spatter back at you. Swirl the oil around so it's nicely coated. And then we can just pour that in. Oh, that's so pretty. Yep. And so just let it cook for about 10 seconds until it starts to form the pancake. Mm -hmm. And then I just sort of tilt it to make sure that raw egg runs around. It's funny, that's how my mom taught me to make an omelet. Really? Um, well, not in a wok, <laughs> <laughs> but to tilt the, the wet right. stuff. And you can actually like lift it a little bit and let it slide under. She taught me that too. Really? Yeah. Maybe your mother had a Chinese soul. <laughs> Maybe she did. So at this point now, I would flip it. There you go. You got it. Ah. Woo! Oh, there wow, that's beautiful. Isn't that gorgeous? So you want a little color on it? Yes. And just for about five seconds, we can turn off the heat. And now I'm just going to flip it over here okay. to cool. And as you can see, there's no sticking in my wok. That is amazing. Because this is a natural nonstick surface. Right, without the toxins. Isn't that beautiful? It's just beautiful. So okay. now I can just add my last, okay. uh, one more tablespoon of oil. Okay, here I'm we go. I'm back on high heat. Okay, so we've got two tablespoons. So swirl it around the outside? Yes. That's perfect. Okay. And now the ginger and the red pepper flakes. And where do these go? Right in here. Just right in the middle? Yep. I'm a little scared of the red pepper flakes. I know we're gonna be coughing. There we go. So your walk is always talking to you. Yes. All right. If you don't hear a sizzle sound, it means that you didn't preheat your wok enough. And, and if that happens, get the ingredients out and start over again? Yes, I would. Because you can't bring it back. Now, mushrooms are like eggplant. They absorb the oil immediately. I was going to say, it suddenly got very dry. Yes. So we can swirl in the vegetable broth. Okay, so around the edge again? Yes. And this is a great, beautiful, this is a great low-fat cooking technique because they because mushrooms absorb so much oil. Ordinarily, we could add two, three, four tablespoons of oil. And they just suck it right up, just like eggplant, as you said. And I don't want that much fat. Mm -hmm. So here we have a little bit of oil, mm -hmm. but that broth is just going to finish cooking the mushrooms. And you're just going to stir fry this until all the liquid is just about absorbed. You know, I'm going to cut up this egg. Oh, you perfect. want this in strips, correct? Thank you. Yes. Oops. Do this first, and then I'll go like this. Perfect. Sort of fun cutting up a little omelet yeah. like this. So it's almost evaporated now. We could actually swirl in that last tablespoon of oil. Okay. And then add the rice and scallions. Okay. Do you add the rice in any particular way? No. And this is why you want to fluff the rice the day before. Otherwise, this would be in complete clumps. It would be a hard block. What do you do if you screwed up or somebody else has ruined your walk? You, how do you fix it? You just do the famous Grace Young walk facial. <laughs> you wash the walk. You um, heat it on the stove, as I showed you, until the water evaporates. Then you add maybe a tablespoon of salt and half as much oil off the heat take a um, thick paper towel pad and buff it with the salt and oil, and it will come back. That's interesting about the kosher salt, because I use that on my, my cast iron grill pan yeah. to get the crusty stuff off. So this, you're, we're just stir frying this until the brown rice is heated through because it's already cooked. And this is the beauty of the wok. In a skillet, because it doesn't have the high sides, all this food would be on your stove top. Right, it would just come out the sides. So now off the heat, we can add 
the soy sauce of pine nuts. I'm going to add and egg. anywhere. Anywhere. No. Okay, the pine nuts. And how did we toast these? You can toast them in the wok. Okay. I actually dry prefer. Wok. Yes, dry wok. Salt and pepper? Yes, okay. just sprinkle it in. And you're using white pepper. Can you explain to me why white pepper? The Chinese often use white pepper. They don't like black specks in their food. Okay, that's yeah. interesting. That's the same reason the French use really? white pepper for white things and black pepper for everything else. I think it's actually more fragrant. One last question as you, yes. as you uh, go ahead, you can um, serve us. I love it, you're serving us. Yes. I have, have to cook at times on a glass top stove that's electric. What do I do with a wok? You want exactly the same wok that I'm using with the flat, flat bottom. bottom. And yeah. this would work on, let's say you have one of those antiquated electric coil, same flat thing. Flat bottom. Okay, this is mm. so exciting. We've got wow. a nice mizuna and uh, radish salad here. This is beautiful. Uh, very, let's, we're gonna head on over and uh, taste our yummy dishes. Okay. Mm. This is really good. So, mm. Cheers. Mm. Thank you so much, Sarah. Matthew Sligar is a third generation farmer from Gridley, California. Population 6,000. It's planting time here in the Sacramento Valley. That means a 90-hour work week nurturing his crop. Matthew is a husband and father, too. But somehow he finds time for this. Hello, everybody. It's Matthew. Yeah, that's me. And you're watching another episode of Rice Farming TV. Take care. Matthew is an unlikely YouTube star. These rice plants have popped. A video blogger who pulls back the curtain on what the life of a farmer is really like. Everybody eats, right? But very few people farm and grow food. So there's, I think, a big disconnect there. I think it's just really important to get the story from the source. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to another Rice Farming TV episode. So once a week, Matthew gets out and produces a new installment of Rice Farming TV. He covers it all, from planting. We're about to fly the rice seed on this field right about now. To harvest. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. Let's cut some rice. Farming issues as old as time. No rain. Can we plant? Tons of rain. Yes, we can plant. More rain. We have to wait to plant. More rain on the forecast. Should we start? It's getting late. Maybe we should have started. Other rice farmers have started. What do we do? And modern technology that makes farming today more sophisticated than anyone could imagine. How did you figure out how to do video? Did you just get a camera and teach yourself? Short answer is yes, yeah. I didn't study any formal filmmaking or photography. Um, I just practiced. I, I, I would hope that you would see kind of- Progression? The, the progression, you yeah. You got better? Yeah, I think so. On days like this, he hardly has time for video. He is just seeing the first shoots of his crop peek through the ground. Oh, that's so small. Yeah, So that's very baby small. rice. Baby rice right there. Okay. And you see, that's actually the little rice seed kernel. Oh my goodness! Yeah, they plant. Can I can I try the top? Yeah. Mm, tastes like grass. It tastes like grass. Right Not now. that I eat a lot of grass. You don't look like a typical farmer to me. What can I say? You're sort of young. You look like all those young people in Brooklyn. What are you doing here? Well, Sarah, I guess I'm I'm continuing my family's legacy. I'm a third generation rice farmer. I grew up as a farm kid. Rice. Yeah, Matthew's holding up the rice for you. I just respect the security and the lifestyle that rice farming gave to me when I was a kid, and I would like to give that same culture and, and security to my family now. King of the rice, huh, Matthew? 
South of Matthews Farm is the Sacramento restaurant, Crew, where rice grown in the valley is used in some pretty mouth-watering Japanese dishes made by sushi master Billy No. He joins us today for a sushi lesson. We're on a roll here in Northern California, and that is no pun because I'm just about to learn how to make sushi at the home of farmer Matthew Sliger, and I'm going to learn from an expert, Billy No here, who's somewhat of a local celebrity chef. You guys, Billy, welcome. Make yourselves at home. Sarah, have fun. I'm going to work on a little project here. Can't wait right. to see what you guys come yeah, up with, nice and I'll see you soon. All right, we start with the rice. This is um, Calrose medium grain rice. So we're rinsing it right because... Now, you want it to be sticky, but also not too sticky. So you so want to get rid of some of the excess exactly, starch. Exactly. You rinse okay. it until it's pretty clear. The next, what you want to do is, uh, before cooking it, is to soak the rice. So we're going to get the water Soak in it here. too, yeah. huh? Soak it for about 15 to 30 minutes, depending on how large of a batch you have. We're going to keep it real simple. We've got one of these automatic rice cookers. Just got to add the rice to the cooker and water, and we're set. So before we do that, let's make sure we get all this water out. Get real. You really want to drain it. Really, really okay. drain it. We drain that and I love these machines. My son has one because they're idiot proof. So now, the right, now that we got it drained, we're going to add uh, equal parts of water. So there's two and a half cups of rice, and this is two and a half cups of water. Okie dokie. Okay. I could do yeah. this. Talk about idiots. And okay. Hit with the rice. There you go. And you hit the button. Our rice is finished cooking. For this amount, how long would it have taken? About 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. 20 minutes um, a little warm here. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> Wait, excuse me, you're supposed to have asbestos hands. All chefs do. <laughs> I'm a sushi chef. I touch yeah. cold fish. Not, okay. Not, okay. Not, and then you let it rest, right? Yeah, rest for about uh, 15 minutes. And you want to add the vinegar mixture to the rice very soon after that. You don't want to wait While any longer. While it's hot. Exactly. Okay, so this is, we've got some we already made that's cooled. Okay, so what kind of vinegar do we have here? Rice vinegar, a third cup. Okay. Salt, sugar, vinegar. And how much sugar? Same, same as the salt. One, one and, and a half, half tablespoons. Yeah. What you want to do is you break up all the clumps. Get it mixed. I like to make a little mountain, and then now you do a slicing motion. You want to cut it, and now fold it back in. Mm -hmm. Can I try? Yeah, absolutely. It's like folding egg whites, yeah. one half there of it go. anyway. Yeah, the most important thing is make sure uh, no clumps in there. Okay, why don't and I keep doing this? Yeah, while you're doing that, I'll, I'll get uh, our next ingredients ready for our, our rolls. And so we're using a um, English cucumber, English cucumber seedless yes. cucumber. Yeah. So those are California avocados, of course. It is. All right, time to make the roll now that our rice is done. The first one we're going to do is our California roll. Nori, okay. seaweed, dried seaweed. Put it down. Most important shiny thing. Shiny side down. Yeah, shiny side down. Most important thing is to keep your hands wet so the rice doesn't stick to your hands. Tennis ball size ball. Mm -hmm. Dense type. Okay. All right. Put it in here. Now spread it. Right there, doesn't Get it all the way to the edge. Yeah. Okay. Oh. And then you just put it on here. Well, okay. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time. It's sticky. It is. Okay. <laughs> some, okay. So next, we're going to some sesame seeds. We've got some uh, toasted sesame seeds and black sesame seeds. And then sometimes the rice likes to stick onto the board, so I'll wet the, the cutting board a little bit before flipping it over. Oh, you have to flip it over. Yeah. California rolls the inside out. Oh, of course. With, uh, rice on oh, the that's, is that too wet? That's fine. Okay. Right. Ready? One, two, three. Whoop! <laughs> wow, it really does That's stick. It? Yeah. I guess there's a reason it's called sticky rice. <laughs> so now we have it flipped over. Our ingredients is just crab and avocado. Okay, down the middle. Uh, right there. And the next, uh, our crab. Now, how many sushi chefs use real crab for California rolls? I don't know. They, should, they all should. <laughs> so this is crab mixed with mayonnaise. Just yep. plain old just mayonnaise. Just plain old mayonnaise. Okay. At this point, it doesn't have to look pretty. You just want to make sure everything will fit inside. Okay. And now you got to wet your fingers again. Okay. And then we're going to do it real slow from one side to the other. Make sure everything gets tucked in real nice and tight so you can actually see the seaweed. See okay, so you, you have a little bit of a, a rim exactly. there. Exactly. Yeah. Before you flip it over and then, okay. then flip it over. Where's and the cucumber? That's going to be for our, our oh, maki. Oh, okay, okay, maki. okay. I was like, there's no room for the cucumber. Okay. This is where this comes in. So this is your... The mat? Mat. Your What's that called? Uh, maki su. Maki, maki su. su. Okay. Just over here. Okay. And now we're going to use this to shape it. So put it right over, squeeze the sides, and then the top, you kind of get it into a little square. Yep, <laughs> just kind of pick it up and flip over the bottom so you can get it nice and oh. tight. Okay, I don't... Looks like a roll. That's it. Roll. Now we just got to cut it. We'll do it in eight pieces so it's easier to eat. So we'll cut it in half. Impressive. I think you've done this before. Here you go. And 
Now we're gonna do a uh, hosomaki, which is another style of a roll where it's uh, smaller in diameter and the seaweed's on the outside. Okay. Nori again, same thing, shiny side down. But this time, look at the lines. If you look at it carefully, you'll see lines. Oh yeah. Here. And you want to lay out the rice, but leave this strip over here open. Well, they make it easy for easy. you. Easy, yeah, exactly. Wet your hands again. Okay. Your rice. So a little history of this roll. The name of this is kappa maki. Kappa maki, kappa is actually uh, a fictional Japanese sea monster that eats children and cucumbers. What? <laughs> children and cucumbers? <laughs> yes. So uh, this sounds like a dangerous roll but, to but be yes, eating. It's just cucumbers. Cucumbers okay. and rice. No, no children. No in children there. in okay, here. Okay, I'm but. glad to hear it. <laughs> mm. Some sesame seeds. We got some uh, toasted sesame seeds and black sesame seeds. So now cucumber, right here. Just one. Just one. Okay. It yeah. really is like making compound butter. Yeah. yeah. There you go. That's it. Just like that. And then I'm going to cut it I into should... six pieces. So. Into six. Okay. Yeah. It smells. I love the smell it's of the seaweed. It smells yeah, so good. It is. It's really delicious. These guys on here. Oh, dear. This. And now to finish off our plate, we need some uh, ginger ginger here and some wasabi. You probably have never had fresh wasabi. You've eaten sushi, I'm sure you all have, but what they eat is not this. What uh, is it that you get? Most restaurants, the, the, the paste that the you green see mound. is a horseradish with food coloring. It's, it's ground dried horseradish with green food coloring. Isn't yeah, that shocking? Real wasabi, it was the uh, expensive cousin of horseradish. Want to just peel it a little bit on the side that you're gonna uh, Great, so it's got a spoon. Or use a spoon, yeah. sort of like you do with ginger. Now this you have to just grate to order, is that yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah, you don't, want, you don't want to do a, a bunch ahead of time because it'll... It loses its pungency. Yeah. So see, we're using real crab meat and real wasabi. Yes. No there wonder you you're such a popular guy. Look there at the color. Go. Well, all righty, I'm gonna go see what this guy's up okay. to. I'll yeah. make a few more rolls for us to have later. Nice. So what have you been cooking up over here? Well, Sarah, thanks for asking. I wanna show you some of my rice buns. I plan on making some sushi burgers with some of the ingredients that Billy brought. But first of all, let me show you how to make the buns. Wow. I've got here some of my own California grown rice. No seasoning, no vinegar, no sugar. Just, just plain just cooked. Like in a rice cooker. Exactly, okay. straight out of the rice cooker. And what I'm going to do is spritz a little bit of cooking spray into this measuring cup. Okay. And I'm going to take 75 grams of rice. The exact sizing doesn't matter. I just want to be consistent, consistent. across so, all buns. So question, is this hot or cold rice? This is cold rice, but you could do it with warming. Now what I'm going to do now is take this wax paper and I'm going to compress that rice uh -huh. down and I'm forming the shape of the bun. Mm -hmm. I've got that compressed now. I'm going to take this little spatula. I've got that sort of separated. I'm going to give another spritz on top because that's going to be cooking here shortly. So it goes in the pan. I'm going to come over to the pan here and I'm just going to plop it onto the pan. I'm going to cook that for about eight minutes on each side, medium high heat. Luckily, I've already done a few. And there's no order to this, but I'm gonna take a little bit of wasabi and just spread that on the bottom of my sushi burger bun. Just a little bit of the nori or the Oh, why not? Why not? As a little bit of This is a layered makeshift. sandwich. And let's take a little avocado and just, you like cucumber? Oh yeah. Okay. The works. Mm -hmm. And take our other bun. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, you know, I oh. was going to put that right on top, just like, you know how hamburgers have sesame seed oh, buns? Oh, good point, And we can just kind of put that right on top there. Uh -huh. You could use these buns for anything, couldn't you? Yeah, you can. It's actually a really cool way of reintroducing leftovers. Oh boy. Use two hands, mm. and it's just like a burger. It's gonna drip, it's mm. gonna get all over the place, mm. and that's mm. part of the fun. Mm. Mm. So you think you could set up some more burgers for our lunch? I got plenty of buns. I think between my burgers and Billy's sushi rolls, we'll we got have plenty, plenty of food. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah.
My wife Clara will be joining us for lunch. Yeah, I think so. So what are we serving here? We've got oh, yeah. Yeah. we got two sake yeah. and rose. Yeah. yeah, you're getting a lot of attention, oh, yeah, Sarah. Yeah, look yeah, at that. that. Look at this. Oh. 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 Is, there, is there a specific way to try the sake? Yeah, like all of it. <laughs> okay, okay with let's that. have a little toast, yeah. Cheers, guys. And then Cheers. we gotta dig in here. Yeah. I'll pass around the burgers. You did? You yeah. just, you just Are you do gonna it. Dip it? No. Oh, we should dip it, right? Yeah, we could dip it. Why not? Right? You know, I especially like the nori in the middle. I always love toasted rice. Where it's like a little crispy on the outside. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's got a nice little crunch to it, doesn't it? Mm. Are you gonna start making this in your restaurant? <laughs> Don't tell him. I will be checking in on you, Billy. <laughs> we all talk about farm to table meals. But it's not often you get to eat at the farmer's table. There's no better way to learn exactly where our food comes from. And on top of that, when it's prepared by someone like Billy, there's no better way to eat, period. From the California Sunshine State, I'm Sarah Moulton. Farmers, we need to know how to eat. <laughs> For recipes and videos, go to our website, sarahmoulton.com. Sarah's Weeknight Meals is made possible by USA Rice, Sunsweet, Hodgson Mill, and the generous support of... Cooking is the first kind of love you know. It was starting when I was a child, with my grandmother doing fresh pasta, and now I transmit it to all the guests. It's something made specially for them. Oceana Cruises, proud sponsor of Sarah's Weeknight Meals.